up everybody it's your boy nate the new and improved blender 3.4 release is finally here and boy are there some exciting updates now blender is a powerful software for creating 3d and 2d animations 3d models and vfx but this is honestly just the tip of the iceberg as to what is even possible in blender i'm really excited about this update because the changes and improvements that the developers have been working on in 3.4 make creating in blender so much faster easier and fun thanks to this update blender is one step closer to challenging the likes of the triple a 3d suites let's hop right into this First up, we have rendering. Now, rendering is an important part of every 3D project, and thankfully the developers have improved Blender's built-in renderer cycles with an integration from Intel's Open Path Guiding Library. This makes difficult scenes much easier to render by allowing the CPU to aid in the path tracing and reducing noise process. You may be wondering, when will I ever use this? Well, for complex lighting scenarios such as long indirect light bounces or indirectly illuminated shadow areas and reflected light sources, this will be especially helpful. Just take a look at these results. They're rendered with the same amount of time, yet the results are night and day. Here the simple caustics look beautiful and add a layer of depth and detail that was not previously possible. In this scene, you can also see how the results look so much better because without path guiding, this image looks super noisy and grainy. And then with path guiding turned on, you can immediately see how much clearer and better this render looks. This is especially helpful for scenes where finding a path is difficult for regular path tracing, such as when a room is lit by light coming through a small door or a crack, or when you have some of these really indirect light bounces and reflections from light sources. So if you're excited to try this out for yourself and utilize these improvements to path tracing, you can find a new tab option for path guiding in the sampling panel right here in the render properties section. So here I'm just going to turn on path guiding and it's pretty impressive to see how quickly these results are rendering out and they look amazing. There's also additional options to really fine tune the way that the path guiding feature works. Now, one thing you're going to note for this new path guiding option in rendering is that it's only possible whenever you're using your CPU for rendering. So if you're using a GPU, you may be wondering where did that option go, but it is actually just for your CPU. So for those of you who are not having a dedicated graphics card to do your rendering, this is actually going to be one of the biggest improvements that you're going to see. There is now improved graphical driver support for AMD HIP, Apple Metal, and Intel One API. I personally use NVIDIA graphics cards, but it's nice to see that there's increased support so that more creators can have access to the awesomeness of Blender. Okay, so sculpting in Blender is is one of the reasons I was so drawn to it in the first place and being able to manipulate 3D objects like I would clay is one of my favorite aspects of modeling. So I'm happy to learn that the developers have made huge improvements to Blender sculpt mode now we get some new auto masking features. This allows us to quickly and easily mask our sculpts by cavity, viewport, and area. To use these new options, the settings are right here in the viewport. And once you click on this dropdown, you can see all of these new options right here. If I click on one of these like cavity, then there are additional options, which are really gonna help me fine tune the way that this auto masking feature works. So let me go ahead and increase the factor. If you wanna preview it, all you have to do is click on create mask and then you're gonna be able to see the way that this mask is getting applied. So these additional options help you really fine tune the mask to your liking. Oh, and did I mention this also works for the painting options? The possibilities are super exciting and I can already imagine being able to deepen pores or really paint onto these models with different skin tones for their wrinkles in an easy and customizable way. Another huge component of sculpting is voxel remeshing, which is when you need to rebuild your model using tiny little voxels so that you have an even density throughout. Now, Blender 3.4 introduces parallelized remesh reprojections, which greatly reduces lag in high poly remeshes. For comparison, just take a look at the difference in time between this 3.4 million poly mesh. It went from 19.6 seconds to 8.7 seconds, which is just insane. That's a whopping 200% increase in speed. Another huge improvement is actually a pretty tiny change, but it will speed up the way that you work with primitives 
and that is how face sets are attributed by default. So before face sets were automatically attributed whether or not you needed them. And essentially face sets are used to control the visibility state of your mesh in sculpt mode. So they help provide greater control when working with complex shapes and overlapping surfaces. However, they do require a bit more power to implement. And so now by default, the primitives will not automatically be assigned face sets. And instead you can manually add them when you actually need them thus improving your overall performance and reducing bloat. UV editing. So there is a brand new sculpt relax tool that is based on geometry. The developers also added in improvements to UV editing and mapping, which is always a bonus. Dealing with UVs is necessary for just about every project. And thankfully they've added in a new geometry based sculpt relax tool which will allow you to brush over areas on your model and fix the UVs to more closely follow the 3D geometry. There's also settings on this brush for the radius, strength, and fall off, which really help fine tune this tool's use. Another huge improvement to the UV editor grid includes having non-uniform grids, pixel spacing, and the ability to draw a grid on top of the image. There's also options to align the rotation of the UVs based on geometry orientation in the 3D viewport, using selected edges or also a best guess orientation. Now, one of the really cool improvements is to randomize islands, which can allow you to easily set a random value to the location, rotation, and scale of your UV islands. And you may be wondering, when will I ever need this? Well, I can see this being super useful for dealing with procedurally generated foliage like rocks in your scene, where you wouldn't really want every UV to be exactly the same for each rock. Now there's an easy way to fix that. Okay, and of course there are a bunch of updates to geometry nodes. Since geometry nodes have been introduced into Blender, they've always been getting more and more impressive with each new update. There are so many new nodes that we're only really gonna talk about some of the best improvements, and that is having the brand new viewport overlay for geometry nodes using the geometry nodes viewer node. Now, when working with geometry nodes, it tends to be a bit of guesswork when you're making these changes and then having to see whether or not something is really how you want it to look like as a final result. Well, thankfully, now you get a brand new viewport overlay for the geometry nodes, which you can access right up here. So the developers have introduced this viewport overlay so that you can preview the attributes without affecting your final result, making creating with geometry nodes that much easier and non-destructive. So to utilize this feature, you can adjust the overlay in the pop-up in the 3D viewport header right here, which will let you activate it and also customize it. So as you can see here, I can also go over to this node and then just turn it on and off so I can preview my final render and then the render that is based on specifically this image texture that we have plugging in here. This is super cool and I can already see it becoming something that is gonna be really useful in my workflow when working with geometry nodes. Okay, this new geometry node is also super cool and this is the sample UV surface node. This lets you get attribute values based on the UV coordinates and in this example, you can see how editing this UV right here with curves then gets implemented in the geometry node setup that creates a stitched patch on this fabric in real time. It's super impressive and I'm excited to play around with this new feature. Now, of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to geometry node improvements. But if we went over every single new node in this update, this would end up being a video that's over an hour long. So if you're curious to read more about the individual updates, you can go ahead and check out the release notes, which will be right there in that description. Now, Grease Pencil is one of my favorite tools in Blender, and I love that the developers have made improvements to make Grease Pencil even better in regards to the fill tool. Now, a huge improvement is introducing a radius method, which will allow you to use the fill tool to fill in gaps without actually having a completed shape. Honestly, I wish more programs have something similar. That's right, I'm talking to you, Adobe. So as you can see from this example, even though this heart is isn't completely filled in with the strokes. The new radius method will calculate the circumference and determine how close the strokes are for filling. And then you can go ahead and actually fill in this area without it having to be a closed shape at all. Now, those are some of the biggest changes to Blender 3.4, the ones at least that I'm most excited about. But if you're completely new 
to Blender or haven't updated in a while, you might want to check out why so many artists are switching over to Blender, which is going to be in this video right here. We talk about all the awesome ways Blender is crushing it in the creative community and challenging the likes of ZBrush, Cinema 40, and Maya. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.